Hello, boys and girls. Well, we've had some things go around the shop here lately, around the home. Unexpected stuff that breaks down that you have. So uh, I took off four days vacation because we're going to go on a little trip, and uh, me and my wife just to get away a little while. Things are, you know, sometimes you just need to get away. So, uh, but in the meantime, I got a couple of days here. That, shop. I'm going to try to start repairing a few things that I've got broke down. One thing is, this compressor right here, I don't know if you can see it very well, it was been a really good one. I bought it. I rebuilt it probably five years ago. It's been excellent. And I did a dumb move. just want to tell you, it was, it's all my fault and I didn't, I thought I was paying attention, but I guess I wasn't. I changed the oil in this the other day. A friend of mine came over and we decided we were just going to do something. So we changed the oil in it. And I hadn't changed it before. And I forgot. It seemed like it looked a little bit milky. And I thought, boy, that was dumb. I should have changed that before now. This don't run all day long. It just you know, comes on and off maybe a couple times a day. Most of the time, unless we're doing some real heavy air use. And then it may come on several times. But most of the time, one or two times a day is about what it comes on and it stays on all the time keeps the air at about 170 pounds in here well, anyway I've noticed that there was a little dripping going on I didn't actually see a drip I just noticed when I made when I changed this oil the other day I'm sorry I'm moving you around I just want to show you I'm not sure how well you can see down in here you see how wet that is underneath there I've had some uh, floor sweep under there because when we changed it it didn't have a good way to drain it and it kind of drained on the tank and we lost a bunch of it under there and I thought that's what that was but obviously it's been seeping because I was going to change it again so I didn't tighten the plug real tight didn't notice it dripping any but apparently it was seeping enough over the last six weeks or so that it has lost its oil and this thing locked up on me and tripped the breaker. Yesterday I noticed my breaker was tripped and didn't have any air. I haven't ever heard it make a noise or do anything, but it started smoking out of here and it's kind of squeaked and, and locked up. And it's kind of, you can turn when it's cooled off, but when it was hot, it was tight. It still feels a little tight. I think we got pistons probably golden in there or a bearing or something I don't know anyway I'm just going to tell you what we're probably going to do today is that and let me get you back over here just to talk to you just a minute I'm not sure how well you can see I'm going to tell you we're going to go down the road since I've got some time I'm trying to kind of relax my mind a little because I get really worked up with my job all week long at the dealership so uh, it's just me home today by myself and tomorrow, my dad will probably stop by at some point. He usually does to help me out. He's retired, and uh, we'll get busy on this. But in the meantime, I'm going to take you down the road. I'm going to go cut some okra from my neighbor. I love to fry it okra, and my garden is hadn't done well. I didn't plant but six plants of okra, and they're not really just now starting to produce. So she said we could come get all we want down there, and she's in the hospital. I think today getting knee surgery, she's not going to be able to be down there and do anything, so we'll probably help pick her guard for her or whatever. But in the meantime, just follow along, and this may get silly, but I told my dad this may be like a can Captain Kangaroo, uh, Mr. Green Jeans, or somebody. <laughs> We're just going to go mess around. We'll call this the uh, shop talk or or shop day or. Whatever we want to do today, we're going to do it. I got a few errands I need to go run in town, and other than that, I don't have a whole lot that I just have to do today, and we're just going to have a good time. We've had a good cold front come through. It's only 80 degrees here today. It's about 10.30 in the morning right now. Excellent weather. The humidity's high because we've got a little rain, but here we are, August the 8th. I think the high this week's supposed to be 80 to 85 degrees. You know, it's usually 105 degrees. So this is great. I'm going to be out here enjoying the weather. I've got a little fan on me because the humidity's 
pretty high and I sweat easy, but uh, we're already five minutes worth of ram, but I'm just showing you what we're going to do. I'll probably take this thing all apart. You know, Scott, I noticed you were having trouble. I was kind of aggravating you about your compressor build. This is a speed air. I don't think you can see. I'll turn this if you want to see what this compressor is. I actually forgot what it is, but it's been a while since I rebuilt it. It's pretty good quality. It's not bad. It's uh, let's get this out of the way. Let's see if we can see what this is. Get you in here. Okay. I'm sure you can see that's a 5Z404D speed air. Don't know what this number is down here for sure. This was bought new where I work since I've been there, but it may have been 20 years ago, close to it. And then it quit. They, you know, did away and got some bigger and better stuff up there now. But uh, anyway, I put this new head. I think I've probably talked about this before. It's a pretty basic thing just to tear down this crankcase, see what's locking up. We'll, hopefully, we can get this, uh, you know, this uh, pulley and if we need to, we'll take the pulley off. We'll probably start out just pulling the, uh, some of this stuff apart. I'd like to see what the pistons look like, so we may just uh, pull the jugs off and look there, but I'm going to need to look in these bearings. So we'll end up pulling this stuff off too. Because uh, i got to get this going as soon as I can, because I use this every day. Can't be without air. I don't have any more compressors around here to use. I'm gonna have to borrow one or something just to get me by there or two while I'm building this. But we're gonna be out of town, and uh, anyway, we'll get back in just a minute on the okra pick, maybe. Here we go. I forgot we gotta go get the mail to see if we got that new set of uh, squares. I ordered some squares, probably Chinese made square. Uh, I think they're kind of like parallels to go into the mill. Here's the little mailbox. Let me get my keys out. And if we can get our mail. Pretty exciting today, isn't it? I told you I didn't have much going on, so got plenty to do, but I just don't have anything I have to do. I like that. There's a little mailbox down at the end of the road, so uh, you know what? That's weird. Kind of looks like it's just a package that says I have a package. That's going to be odd. I hope that's not something I didn't. I may have just got screwed. 
says easy accessory. Let's go back to the house and see what that's all about. Here we come back home from the mailbox. So let's see what we got going on here. We got a dozer over here unloading back here. I don't know what they're doing. Anyway, let's pull up in the shop here. All right, let's just see what I had. I had ordered what's well, dark in here, isn't it? Let's see. I think it'd be best if we stay over here. Let's see what in the world we got going on here. I ordered some squares on, uh, I believe, eBay. And all I got, and there's the tracking number. There's a package here. I don't understand what that is. Better open it up. I wonder if... Huh. I'll get right back with you when I get something to stand the camera on. Well, that's a heck of a deal. Look at that weird thing. They was in this weatherproof envelope from where I ordered this easy accessory. And all that was in it was this paper. It said, thank you for your order through eBay. Your order was delayed or shipped from a different location. Please expect, you know, they, it's this Chinese in English, whatever they call it. Chinglish, I think. It says your order, please expect to one or two day delay for your, <laughs> I assume that meant for your order. We are sorry for any inconvenience. If you have any accessories, please email easyaccessory at yahoo.com. We appreciate your business and thanks for your patience. Well, golly, that's stupid. Why don't you just send messages through eBay if there's any issues with an order? That makes me really wonder what's going on. Why would you ship that envelope when you could just as easily email me through eBay? Anyway, I guess I don't have my order yet. We'll get back. Alright, on with the starting to take this apart now. Remember I told you it's kind of locking up, so I know the damage is already done. Let's just take this thing apart. I've already took the bulk out of this pulley. It's tied. I'm going to have to bring that. <coughs> I don't think I got any pullers here at the house. I'll have to bring some. I have it work. But we can leave that on for now. And let's just start taking uh, stuff loose here. Let me see. Let me get those elements. Yeah, let's see. I normally would use air tools, but <laughs> we don't have any air, right? I want to clear everything from the head that's attached to me. Those are not Allen wrench, that's a torch. That's a torch, so let's get the torch there. Yeah. Jump the tools here, you know, crap is done. That's all I got here on them. I think they're about a third of your feet. These ain't laid out as good as I have. Let me snap on them. Does it work? Yep, there's what that one did. So, you can just grab the air rectors. Tell you what, I'll do it. If I can find my 
little electric driver that maybe that where I used to buy. Break this loose. I'm going to use that maybe. There it is over there on the floor. I assume you can see this. I'm not using my monitor right now because I'm using this microphone that kind of robs the Wi Fi part of it if you uh, have Wi Fi hooked up that don't work well. So it works okay to block some wind and stuff off of the microphone. Get my little power driver here. Okay. This little dude will speed things up a little. I'm just taking the I don't know what this is. I think it's the pipe that Transfers from the high side to the low side. I just said it back. Low side to high side. Compression. You know this is a two-stage compression for high high pressure. Uh, we won't get into that too much. That's a different video and a different deal altogether. If you're interested in understanding how these work, uh, we could do something on that sometime if you care. But there's plenty of stuff out there about how compressors work. That's, uh, that's a whole different day there. There's really not that much to it, honestly. It's just a matter of, I'm dropping O-rings out here. And I missed a boat that fell on the here that we'll find sometime. But I was just having an O-ring that's sealed against the head right there. There's that boat. Okay. And this may be stranded right there for now. I wonder if I really need to take this head off. Probably so. Go ahead and get it out of the way. There's three bolts there. Here would be a three eighths. I'm not real used to standing size this because everything. I do is in metric most of the time. You know, in low down, sorry, metric. Put my dad said, We bow to them low down, sorry, them. It don't matter. Just, just relax. It's just another boat size. This complicates our life a little bit. We can handle that. All right, that gets the intake deal. And I think Gary Cood which I may try to look him up this week as we're traveling on vacation out to East Texas. Uh, he lives. I looked him up. He lives up in uh, Northeast Texas, which is I think about 30 minutes off of the trail where we're going to be probably going uh, Thursday. I may look him up and see if I can meet him in person if he wants to. I, I don't, you know, some of these. All right, let me get this off while I'm talking quick. Yeah, I can it. You know, I'm going to be out close to Adam Booth's area, I think, too. And I, I would love to meet him. But if he doesn't want to, that's, I understand that. I don't even know if I'll even ask him because that's really. There's so many weirdos out there, you know, that uh, want to track people down. That these guys got to be careful. I'm sure to not just let everybody know where they're at and where they live. And they might steal stuff from them. They may, you know, try to do some kind of physical harm to them. You never know what kind of wackos are out there. But if any of these guys, I'd love to meet any of them guys if I can. Let me get a wreck. But if they don't want to, I understand that they can't just let everybody in. They don't have time to mess around like that anyway. You know, these guys have full-time jobs like we all do. The stuff we do on YouTube is just to try to clear our mind of the normal 
crap you know that goes on. So these are probably kind. Of, this is exactly where you need air cool. But if you don't have air tools, then you gotta do it the old-fashioned way, I guess. I'm not used to that. Let's just start popping these head bolts out. You know, you don't start on one end. That. Try not to shake you on the camera. You want to do one side and then the other and back and forth. I'll probably have to look the torque specs up at this back. It's been a... I probably have a manual print out of this, but I don't remember where. I'd have to look in the file. <laughs> anyway, just kind of work back and forth like you would any head gasket. This looks like aluminum or something like that. So, you know, just be careful with this stuff. When I get it popped loose, I'll probably use my drill impact driver. Oh, we're doing pretty smooth. I think I've got them all loose. This got to be the most boring thing here to watch somebody take the bolts out. I'm just documenting this. I may I need to refer back. It depends on how long this goes on. And then I'm fixing to be out of town. I was hoping to tear this down and see if I need to order any parts. Might be back. Maybe here when I get back to town next week. There's one little screw there that I'm not sure what to do. Just take a look at These are handy little dudes here. If you ever give you these from Home Depot, they're rigid. They make different sizes. This is the baby one. This is like $79. Lifetime warranty on the battery and the drivers. I've told you this. I got a little bit bigger one at work they use, but they have the quick connect thing on them. All right, there's our little head with the reed plates built into it. I bought this when I rebuilt this new. It looks like it has an O-ring built right into it, but actually looks reusable. Thank goodness. I'll try to put that back together just fine. I'm more worried about the bore and the pistons here. Yeah. Let's see. I guess, boy, I wish I had some air pressure and I could blow that off, but I don't have any. Let's see about borrowing an air pressure compressor from my dad, a little pancake. Probably wouldn't be a bad idea just to go to Harvest Freight and buy a little cheap pancake compressor for times like this when you just need a little bit of air to run a nail gun or cleaning around it surface like that. Alright, let's take uh, probably a wrench right there just to pop these loose. Same way I'd start on the end. You should really, they ain't real tight. They're tight but they're not super tight so I probably torqued them to a certain spec when I did that. Pretty sure I had this whole thing tore the plumb down and clean. Main reason I'm doing this, I might could get by with just replacing some parts in here, but I saw some residue in the bottom, like some ground up gray metal, like when an engine goes out, you know. Uh, and I want to get in there and clean all that out and make sure it's in good shape because I promise I'll never let that happen to me again. That was a dumb mistake that I made thinking I was taking care of it and I absolutely didn't know it was seeping. I just get so busy all the time I don't always pay attention like I should. I'm trying to see if I've got an adapter to go to the edge here. It's kind of a mess isn't it? Okay let's just buzz these bolts up. Whoop. We've got 3 H 24 bolts. Fine thread. If you're not used to the thread, 3H24. I believe that's right. It's been a while. I told you I'm used to metric now. But I believe it 3H24 is the final. We can look on the chart, but we don't care right now. Alright, this is a simple deal here. Anybody can do this. This ain't nothing. Just because I'm a mechanic, you don't need to. Just do your homework if you don't know. What to do here? 
Now, let's pop that loose. You know where the hammer drawer is, but you still open all the drawers like a dummy. Pop that loose, okay. This is going to be a total teardown. You know, normally you might not want to do it this but let's go ahead and get them off of there. I want to inspect the bore, and I'll probably hone this. You don't normally reuse rings. You ever pull rings out of a cylinder? They're pretty much done, from what I've always been taught anyway. You don't normally reuse rings. You probably could try. If you do, be sure and hone the cylinder real good. Because I've been told rings will not reseat if you ever pull them out of the hole. But you know, we are talking about a compressor, not a running engine. And these were brand new when I put them back. And I may reuse them. If I don't find anything golden on this, too bad. I'm probably going to reuse as much of this as I can. I may polish on the, anything I find. I'm not seeing a lot here, folks, so I'm hoping that it was just a matter of a. Yep, I found something there. Boy, that was locked up. The rod on this high pressure piston, so you got your low and your high. I'll right quick tell you how these work, and generally, not nothing real advanced here, but. You got a big piston that's probably I measured it over four inches for sure. Let's say it's a four and a half inch piston, and this one's about a two and a half inch. You, it pumps up, I don't know how many pounds, but a lower pressure, and it feeds it into the high side. And this smaller one pumps your high pressure, and it's just back and forth. You know, you got about an 80 gallon tanker at least on this. But I can tell you right now, that rod feels good, but this high side is seized up. And so I'm going to probably end up needing, from what this feels like, it's probably the only thing wrong. And so I'm going to pull this rod off. Looks like an Allen wrench here that's way down in there. So being that that's it's pretty well seized up. So I bet we ruined the crankshaft, which will, this may end up a, well, we'll see what's going on here. I bet you can't buy a crankshaft on these for to be worth the money. It looks like a quarter inch. I don't know if this is something you can resize the rods on or we'll see about that. That's I've got good friends in the machine shop, you know, engine machine shops here in town that do tractor rebuilds, you know, as far as machining. And the sleeving cylinders and resizing rods and stuff. We'll see. Uh, I'm lucky there that I've got people in the field that I'm really good friends with. That this guy's not not some young guy. This guy's 80. He's turned 81. He's been in this business his whole life, so he still works every day. He's 81. He don't work a whole lot. His son is about 50 in his late 50s. That does most of the work. But Herman is still there every day, and uh, he does still bore the cylinders and do some of the machine work. He's a very brilliant guy, and we'll, uh, I'll definitely be talking to him about this, I'm sure. I'll get him to do some of this machine work for me if I can't do it here. At least get some advice from him. And I'll look at parts, you know, if it's something easy to replace and cheap enough. I'm not trying to get out of spending money on this. It's my fault and I'm going to fix it, but, you know, I'm going to be smart about just spending what I have to. Now, we need to make sure we know which way this rod was on here, in case it's not marked. And I'll tell you for video's sake, there's numbers on the rod that I can't make out, but there's some identification on the rod facing me, facing towards the pulley. I'm going to try to pull this rod cap out and put it on just like it came off. I'm sure this rod is done for, but I'm just telling you for the sake of assembly which way I'm pulling this apart. Just like I'm holding it, I'm going to stick these bolts 
Boy, how did that bolt is kind of boogered up in the hole as well. Make sure I put it. Just like it goes here. This piston probably is marked, but I don't know for sure. But the numbers are facing the flywheel side right now. I'm just going to put this together right quick so I can. And that crank definitely has, it's either just, it could just have aluminum seized to it, which would be fine if we can um, put that back. Let me show you. I don't have a monitor here I'm not using. I just want to show you best I can right now. This definitely has some galled up aluminum to it and on the crankshaft. Uh-oh. Now I dropped the sucker and I don't know for sure which way it went. I think it was like this. That's the side I couldn't get on. Boy, that bolt don't want to tighten up to nothing. That's strange. Oh, they weren't in that way, you dummy. They went into the top. Alright. Anyway, that's what the problem is here. This one feels good. Let me see if it has any slack in it. No, I don't feel any slack. Of course, there's plenty of side clearance that Maybe normal. I don't know about these. I'm hoping I can just clean this crank. If so, I can pull it out on the, maybe put it on the lathe and I'll polish it with some 400 grit or something. And then I'll mic this thing and see if I can find the uh, size it's supposed to be. And then maybe something with the resize this rod or buy a new rod. We'll see what's available. But anyway, for right now, that's showed me what was locking up. I still want to look at these bearings, so uh, let's pull this end off here. I don't remember what's in this end. It may just, I don't know, maybe just hold some oil in here or something. This is the vent here, and I guess when you fill it up with oil, or you can fill it up with oil. The oil fill is right, plug is right over here, actually, but and then the sight glass is not real clear because it kind of got dirty for some reason. That's why I thought it had oil in it, but apparently not. It had too much oil in it when I changed it, so I thought, well, you dummy. It's because you ain't changed it in five years, and it, I guess, built up condensation in it and, and got too full or something. I don't know. So then I didn't put, I just put where it was just barely on the side glass, which maybe I should have overfilled it. I didn't read the instructions. Maybe you're supposed to have it fuller than that to be sure they oil. I don't know. All right, that got all them oh, so let's just give us a little tap. That didn't come off too easy, did it? Pop it. Coming off too good. I don't want to get rough with nothing. This is kind of like a wing room, and I don't know how hard I tap it. That ain't coming off very good. Yeah, let's see. There we go. Looks like cast iron, so fairly tough. There's a thrust washer right there. I don't know what the thrust setting is on this right now. There's a bearing there, a nice looking bearing that don't appear to have any wear on it. Feels good and smooth. I probably replaced this when I built it, I don't remember. That feels just fine. I don't think we really damaged that. Uh, again, I don't think I'm not sure I can pull this out. Let me move this to get this. It seems like this thing's hard to get out of here. <laughs> okay. Just for reference sake, this pop-off valve was on this side. Looking at the pulley, it's on my left-hand side, so I don't remember which way this fits. 
I might can leave this pulley on it. I may have done that when I built it. I mean, for now, I'm gonna have to eventually get it off of there if I'm gonna put this in the lathe. That's got a center mark there, and I hope it's got one on the other end so I could probably put this on the lathe to polish it and check it. So that's one good thing that I have now that I didn't have when I built this earlier. All right, as far as reference on this piston and rod, and it could, it feels like to me that it has quite a bit of side clearance that I don't know if that's normal. But all of the markings on this rod as well are facing the flywheel side. So let's go ahead and pop this off. Yeah, it's tight. Maybe it has some lock tight or something on me. Okay. Take this rod off, we'll turn it to where we get to it a little better. You can see there's not a lot to these, but it still needs to all be done right. We want some long life, and this one would have went a long time if I hadn't. I assume it's because it ran low in oil, because I didn't get much oil at all out of this. And I, I think I put two quarts or more in this uh, probably six weeks ago when I changed it. So it's sat there and seeped out two quarts of oil without me even knowing it. So I had that floor sweep under that and I just thought that was catching what was there. Now this one has, you know, like some little bridges, it has like a a dipper in it or a slinger, whatever you want to call it, on the bottom of the rod. So let's pull this off and put it right back like it was. I don't lose track of how that bolts it down. Let's just stick these bolts kind of loose in it. I don't know the direction of the piston, I know the direction of the rod, it has numbers on it right there. It says two, so it's number one and number two, like most engines. Start at the flywheel side for number one and number two. So I'm talking about small engines, not cars or nothing. But, uh, and just looking at the surfaces here, they don't look, they're not dry or galded at all. They seem in good shape. So for some reason, that other one wasn't, was starving for oil and that this one really wasn't. So I'm gonna bet this one's okay. I don't know that. Now I wanna see if, yeah, that crank's gotta come out that way, so there's no way to get the crank out without pulling this pulley off. But, you know what I might do if I'm careful? I might could give it a rappy tap tap. Like Abe says, tappy tappy tappy, something like that. Tap, tap, tap. I don't remember what he said. We shouldn't watch him. He's filthy man, but sometimes it's funny. I'm going to pop that pretty hard and see if this pulley will come loose. This bearing is trying to come off, which almost scares me to put that loose. See that bearing come right off of there, so. I wonder if that thing's supposed to be that loose. The numbers on this <laughs> says China. I don't know if I put this or if it's 6207. That's a Chinese bearing. It seems pretty good. Though. It's a little problem with it. So I don't know how tight that fit is supposed to be on that. That came off pretty easy. The bearing on the other end feels pretty good as well. Skin free and smooth. <laughs> But I'd like to take a big hammer, see if I can knock that out of there. Because it has a pretty good surface here. I don't think it will hurt it. I'm just going to hit it a few times. I'm not going to get crazy here, but. No, I don't feel like it wants to come. So. I didn't think it buzzed, it might have buzzed. 
problem is this bolt in here was kind of tight like a like an interference fit or something. I know that's probably loud on the camera, so we'll have to deal with that. Let me get a big hammer and smack it pretty hard. Just see if it's gonna come loose. Yeah, it's moving. So that's good. We did budget. Let's get this back a little ways. See if it's gonna come off yet. Yeah, it's coming off. Well, that's good. I thought I was gonna have to go get one of my pullers at work. You know, I hate to go to work when I'm on vacation because I, I don't want to be there. I don't want to see nothing. There's probably people in my work area that aggravate me to even see them over there. Probably getting my work area dirty or anything. I just don't want to even be there and see it. All right, let's put the pulley down here. We should be able to move the crankshaft right on out of here. There we go. So. That's the journal. Let me show you. I, I don't know the specs on this yet. Here's the journal that was seasoned up on the little rod. See, here's how good this bearing feels. It spins real free. I don't see any metal on anything. I think we may have got lucky on this. I bet you this journal's just fine. We may, all we need is Possibly to clean this up, we'll see. Because it's not gouged or anything crazy. It may just have some aluminum material that melted to it or something. But we'll measure it. So I may just only need this rod right here. And I could probably reuse this gasket. It looks brand new. Woo! That keeps falling on me. We'll probably just put a new rod on this. And... Uh, I think that's all we're really going to need. Let me get these screwed together. I may go talk to Herman. We possibly could resize this rod. I don't know. It's hard to resurface aluminum, you know. Uh, it's not like you can hone aluminum out real smooth, too good. So, uh, you know, I got a boring head on the mill. I might could. I think it would be cheaper to just buy a rod in this case. I mean, we could do that for the fun of saying we machined this, but I don't have time to play games like that, actually. Uh, this is a pain. This ain't going to take through. I think I'm going to go look at some parts. And at this point, it looks like I got lucky. And probably all I'm going to need, I don't even think this seal's been leaking here. And it was probably new when I built this. So, I may look up some specs on this if I need to, you know, fix any in-play problems. That seemed like it had a little in-play on the crank, because I remember I told you it had this washer. If I need to get some more washers and play with in-play, I might, I doubt it. It's probably not that important. I don't see any wear on anything, even on any side areas. I don't think it's all that important on the compressor, especially when it don't run all day long. So we may fix this up on the lathe here in a minute. And uh, I'll clean this up real good and uh, make sure I don't have any cracks or leaks that I don't know about. I don't know why it would just... I'll tell you one thing that happened here. I was wondering about this. That's probably what caused the failure. It may not even be that I necessarily did anything with... I mean, it may have already been failing and then I added to the problem. This little slinger on the bottom, it could be because this got so hot. That thing has fell out of that rod. It's supposed to just stick in there. It looks like a rope in that sticks in the bottom of the rod to sling that oil in. So it wasn't slinging on this rod, but this one was. So 
So when it quits slinging, that oil, it probably dips it and pushes it up. That's what it does. See, there's a hole in that rod. I think that goes up in there. So when that dips down in that oil, it kind of pushes some oil up in this roll pin and goes into this little groove around the rod to oil it. That's what happens. So that one had fell out. And it could have fell out because it got hot and seized. I don't know why it fell out, but the, that's going to be the problem. And in the bottom of this case, there's really not a lot of debris like I thought I might find. There's some of that gray stuff, but not a real big abundance. And there's certainly no big pieces of metal down in here. So I could probably take this outside after I really rinse it good with some brake clean or something. And I'll probably take my pressure washer and some simple green or a purple power degreaser. I'm gonna I'll clean this real good, dry it up, and then we'll bring you back. You can take a little nap here and we'll bring you back maybe when we're trying to clean the crank up. We'll see you.